Your style and your flavor make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach Minzy, best round here. Remember that. Your style and flavor make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach Minzy, best round here. Remember that. Welcome back to Coach's Desk. I'm your host, Coach Minzy, and we have a special guest that will be uh, that will be joining us in uh, in just a few moments on the live stream, just to talk about his career as an athlete and what he's uh, currently doing at the moment. And people, I'm certain that you are aware. And uh, based on what you'd have seen on the thumbnail, the athlete, the big man, the school that he represented, it's all visible for you to see. I must say big up to the persons over there on Facebook that they are watching at this moment as well. Um, big up to the persons who are early. Yeah, we have some early birds um, that are on the stream. Uh, we have persons like Althea Peart. Big up yourself, Althea Peart. And here's what Althea is saying. This should be a great session. Haven't heard from him in years. So Althea knows who we are talking about. Um, big up to Michael Gordon. Um, Michael Gordon will have some questions to ask to our guest. Yes. Um, Fresh God, big up yourself, the, the moderator and the comments manager, big up yourself, Fresh. El Padrino. Big up and welcome. Claudia Hodges, welcome, welcome, welcome. South Croy, big up yourself and welcome, South Croy. Um, Jason is in the building at the call of Calabar. <laughs> hey, the Calabar people are going to roll out tonight. You know, man. Let's say Jason Perron, one of the Erudite Squad members over here already. His name is already in green. So you know the thing. <laughs> yes, my people. So um, we see we have about 10 people on. We know that the stream soon, you know, the numbers soon gone up. Um, big up to Roderick in the building. Um, we say, um, Roderick, the stream is in HD vision. Yeah, man, big up yourself. Born in Jamaica, Examica. <laughs> Always great to hear from the little warrior. So I see that our guest has a whole lot of fans out there, the man. Jay, hey, that means that this is gonna take off tonight, you know. So Christ said the sons of Rabalak. Chano. <laughs> hey people, I'm feeling the vibes already. Yes, man, I'm feeling the vibes already. We're up for a wonderful time. Um, these comments are telling me that, you know. It's a good thing that will happen um, this evening on this stream. So we are giving about three more minutes. Then we get the, the guest on. Um, <clears throat> sorry. We are hearing words in the track and field circle that Pocket Rocket, Shelley and Fraser Price might go up to Paris. That's 2024. So we will definitely be following that story to see what will come out of that in that moment. And there are some rule changes in track and field, especially with, um, you know, there was a rule that if you run on the line, you will be disqualified. 
Now, I believe that they would have made some adjustment to that rule. Um, you can touch the line once and you're good to go. But if it is a continuous thing, then you're still in problems. And that's what I've interpreted um, from this rule change. It was released by the World Athletics. There are some other rule changes, but, you know, uh, we're not going to be getting into those at this moment. Um, definitely grimy uh, family production. Welcome to the stream. Um, people, just remember to sh share up the stream. Um, get the people on so that we can have a great time over here talking to a legend. Mm -hmm. One of the, hey, when I just came into Chuck and Field, people, doing Chuck and Field, all I hear about is this. I don't know the name already, but I don't call him name until I introduce him. But all me hear, I'm here, I've been hearing about was this prodigy, was this sensational athlete. You know what I mean? And to finally meet him, have uh, having uh, spoken to him, he's a cool person and his vibes is good as well. And for me to meet him, it's an honor. Yeah? Definitely, it's an honor. So, definitely, we are going to look forward. Well, I'm looking forward to hear him speak. Like what Richard would say, speak! <laughs> yes, man. So, um, let me get right into it to introduce the man. Um, in 2006, Daniel was awarded the Athlete of the Decade. 1980s and in april 2018 he was inducted into the pen release carnival family wall of fame daniel he actually holds a bachelor's of science degree in hotel management hotel and restaurant management sorry from the northern arizona university he's also head track coach for several high school in Phoenix. And the thing said that it finished. This man owes a U staff or IWF, which is now World Athletics Level 2 and MGCP certified coach. So, people, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in this world, help me welcome one of the most talked about athlete. Separate and apart from Usain Bolt, one of the most talked about athletes, and we are going to have a great time listening to his story. Welcome. Put your hands together. Put some virtual hands together, now, people. Drop some something in the comment, no man. Before we bring on the general, come on, no man. Drop some hand clap in the in the comment section. Some virtual hand clap. Wait, wait, what are you waiting on, people? All right. Welcome to Daniel <laughs> England. Welcome, my brother. Hey, respect, Coach Menzer. Big up, big up. Hi, yeah, welcome, 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 guys. Thanks for having me on your show, it, sir. It, it's indeed a pleasure for us to have you over here, um, <laughs> England. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, how are you doing, by the way? All is well, you know. I took a nap just for your show, you know. So, I want yeah, to energy going. You know what I mean? Uh, but all uh, right. Can't complain, my brother. Can't complain. I am like definitely, you know definitely, and uh, we're happy that you're all right. So, we're we're gonna get right into it. Um, should I say coach? Should I say former athlete? There's so so many accolades. Hey, look, <laughs> look, a warrior. You know, whatever works for you. I'm not that sensitive. You know. <laughs> uh, all right, cool, cool. Not that sensitive, coach. What, what what I want you to highlight for the the persons who are on at this moment is where did it all started that love for track and field you know what track and field i mean the first time i ran really is um one of the older kids came by came by the house really and truly started on the bet one of the older kids came by the house and asked my dad say hey mr england can i use one of your son to run a quick race you know so my dad asked him because my dad is a very militant kind of guy you know he's pretty strict you know uh, we came from Maxfield Avenue so you know you yeah. have to keep the flocks them pretty tight you know what I mean so um the guy called me out and um and he told my dad 
Hey man, I, I want the short one, you know, because I was the shortest one in the family, <laughs> <laughs> the little warrior deal. So I came out, man, and um, I run these older guys at the time. I, mean, I think I was seven. These guys were high school. And um, I dust them out, you know. Got my 50 cents back in the day. You know, I was happy about it, you know. And that's how I kind of knew I have some form of talent. But my dad, my dad was the one that really um, got the whole family running, you know, uh, my sisters, my siblings. Um, I'm not sure if he was uh, – um, he didn't make the team or something, but <laughs> but, but, but everybody everybody had to run, man. In in, in my household, you, you have to run. So so he just kind of take off as a as a young age, around seven, and it just kind of take off from there. It was something that I enjoy doing, you know. So and um, since since that one bet, it was it was never the same after that. Yeah, man, awesome. And see, we have a, a first super chat on the board from a, 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 the utmost for the highest. You, you must know Here, that. Sir. Mean, you know? Here, sir. <laughs> yeah, man, that's kind of our first in the <laughs> Jason Ferran. Now, who was your first coach um, when you started doing track and field? When I started the track and field, um, my first coach was Coach Cox from Whitfield All Age School. Um, mm -hmm. That's where I went to school before I went to Calabar. And Coach Cox, you know, he was a teacher, of course. Back in the day, you're, you're multitask as a teacher. Mm -hmm. The coaches wasn't really official coaches. They're just teachers, a substitute kind of deal. But Mr. Cox was a very um, tall, um, tall gentleman. And um, and, he was take, and he would take us to these different meets, you know. But it was, it was pretty much on your own. We'd take the bus together, you know, and we'd take the bus home. So, but it wasn't really, we didn't really have a track back then. You know, um, at we feel all age school. It was just it was a small school, but either way, I was training um, with my dad most of the time at home. Okay, so your dad assisted in the in the whole process of you um, being who you are or you you were at the time on the track. Yeah, man, my dad. We had to get up. We had to get up. Even even now, I still it's still ingrained in me. I, I, we have to get up at five every morning, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, um, believe it or not, every morning we had to get over five and we do our little jogging around the block with the dogs and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, run, run, leave the dogs sometimes. But um, but it was something that it's, it was an everyday routine. So going to school, that was this additional training, really. So, so that's all, all right. So, so what, what, what happened at Whitfield um, College? You, you run any any competition? school versus school at that time yeah man yeah man i mean that's where that's where that's how i got recruited um i mm -hmm. dominate i dominate the all these champs um pretty much just kind of run away with it you know mm -hmm. I, I won the, the one the two the four we didn't have a relay team mm -hmm. you know but i pretty much dominate i dominate all these champs and and i think that's when i got recruited by the great oh. the great the great man okay um when 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 you ran at at at, at Whitfield at their all age um, did they have anything like the the, the, the the parish meets you used to attend that where parish uh, go up against parish no it was more like a district kind of deal um, mm -hmm. more like a district within the area uh, okay, you know, okay. the different areas around um, you know Kingston mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a little bit outside St Catherine I mean it, the, the meet was the meet happened but you know, it was there a lot of fans like champs, you know, boys champs? Mm -hmm. uh, no, but but the meet do happen. So uh, so it was it was on a lower scale. It's almost like because I did run at primary champs too. You know. Russell oh, okay. Primary. So, so which, which school? Russell Primary. Oh, Russell. Yeah. All right, big up to all the Russell Primary people. Yeah? Yeah, well, big up, big up, big up, Russell. All right. So after doing so well at the the all age champ. Um, Calabar came knocking. Were your parents readily um, accepted the the, the, the the move to, to for you to go to Calabar? Because sometimes parents wanted to go to a, a particular high school. You know, was Calabar on the list? Well, Calabar wasn't on the list, but any of the and Calabar wasn't on the list at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if you ever met Irma McKinley. But when you when you come across Earl McKinley, it's very hard to say no, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> You're hard to say no. You know, that guy is such a statue. I mean, it, it, it would just, uh, it, it, the guy just wow you, you know, wow, wow you in, in everything that he do. You know, when he first came in there, that was the first time I ever saw a Mercedes, you know, uh, parked yeah. up at the gate, you know, and everybody's like coming to the gate like, yo, who, who is this, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was an experience for me to see, you know, Earl McKinley, you know, pulling up at the gate and um, ask to speak to my parents and have a conversation, you know, because, you know, Max feels there already, you know, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but he wasn't, he wasn't scared of anything. He, he, he was just, you know, he, he came and we had a conversation. Um, I had, um, we had a few more high schools came by. I won't mention the names, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But definitely, it was a it was an easier decision when once he once he came through came through the came through at the house. Yeah, man, cool. So somebody saying that the first time they went to the national stadium to run, and they saw the whole stadium chanting "C bar, C bar" right around them. They said uh, in the stadium, the person said that he was. <laughs> It, this the chant was so low that 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 he got stadium fright. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to state. Welcome to boys champs, right? Yeah, Michael Evans, big up yourself. Yeah. Um, talk to us about those years at Calabar because you got the name Little Warrior. I want you to tell us about that. And what was it like being at that uh, institution, Calabar? But I mean, back then, Kabar was such a huge, huge school to me, you know, mm -hmm. because there was a lot of legacy. You know, Earl McKinley is the one that kind of really gave me the, the pride and joy to wear the green and black. You know, um, mm -hmm. he just he just set the bar so high that if you wasn't, you know, pretty much if you wasn't going to Kalabar, to me, I feel like you were missing out on things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There were so many resources there. You know, when I was at Calabar, I, I have everything, you know, to my fingertip. You know, people thought I was, people thought I was sponsored by Adidas, you know? Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, all I wear was Adidas, you know? So everybody was like, yo, you know, you got, you got, you got a sponsor, you know, sponsor athlete. But, but definitely without Earl McKinley, I don't think I would enjoy Calabar as much, um, to be honest with you. But mm -hmm. he, he just set the bar so high. I mean, he's not just a coach. He was a mentor. He was a father figure. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel like you're at family. You know, it's it's one of those environments. You don't even want to go home. You know, you just want to hang out. You know, and kind of wait till wait till the, the the rush crowd run off. You know, before you take the bus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it just it just it just it was a good setting in a sense, a family setting. You know what I mean? So definitely, we we roar together. We you know we we go war together. You know, we fight together, and mm -hmm. it was just that feeling alone was just, um, it was awesome, man. I, I can't really explain how, how good it was um, going at Calabar. Right. So you, you, you left Whitfield not into a structured training program. Right. I know you're at Calabar, the, one of the biggest schools at the time. Right. What was the, the, the training like? Did you, were you able to adapt easily to, to what they were, they were doing at the time? And were you lauded as a, a, a young prodigy who came in? No, no, man. I was I was on the bench when I went to Calabar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah about, the, the about, bench, bro. Yeah, I was on the bench, bro. Because <laughs> be honest with you, my first race at Calabar was um was a medley relay, man. I mm -hmm. the medley, you know, I was. I was just, I mean, I, I had talent, obviously, you know, I got recruited, but I wasn't, no, I wasn't even close to top three at all, you know, yeah. so I ran, I ran the medley relay and that's how I got on the team. And after that, it is kind of, once I, once I get a, a, a good shot in the arm with that um, champs, man, it was just like, man, I, my, my whole men, men, Mental just just kick in. It was just yeah. like, dude, I got I got I gotta get some more of this, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's. No, I wasn't the good at, I wasn't the top athlete when I first came. Okay, out. okay, good. How how, how did how did you get the name Little Warrior? 
Well, you know, you know, I got a little word from Bobby Frey. I mean, the the, the great announcer, rest yeah. in peace, Bobby Frey. You know, I was, you know, Bobby Frey was a uh, a good friend of of the family. You know, um, he, he used to come by the house sometimes and have conversation with my dad and the kind of deal. And you know, I, as you know, a lot of people don't see me live, but they see me on the track. But mm -hmm. on the track, I'm like always the shortest guy on the track. You know, so. And the way my running style, the way my running style is, it was, I never ease up, you know? I was always like, you know, like one man said, why I'm a quick chat because you burn up my chest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was, I was pressing the gas, you know? I never, I never hesitate, I never hold back, you know what I mean? To me, I just want to get on and get off the track. So because of that, my running style was so, you know, um, Warish, if that's a word, mm -hmm. it was definitely, you know, it was definitely something that it was, um, like I said, it was very aggressive. I yeah. was a very aggressive runner. Okay. So, now, you had some very outstanding performances at Champs in the 400 meters, setting records upon records, and many would have thought that they, 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 they wouldn't have been broken. Right. Which one of those would have been your favorite run? You know, I, I like the 200, honestly. 200 mm -hmm. was one of, one of my favorite races. But mm -hmm. for some reason, I was better than four. You know, I didn't understand that part. But because I was too short, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, always, I love running the turn. You know, I, I love running the turn. And um, But but it ended up to be the 400, 400 meter was my better race. You know, uh -huh. um, the, the, the time wasn't, I mean, that, I mean, it was 46, <laughs> it was like 46, I think it was three uh -huh. um, at the time and 21, 2101 was for the 200 back then, you know, but obviously those are just like uh, semifinal times now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I didn't really, I didn't really expect it um, not to be broken. It, it was, it just, to me, I was just running because you know, I love it, you know, I, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed the crowd while I was running. So I didn't expect the time to be, you know, hold up for too long. But <laughs> but because it, 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 it was it was 2-4, man, make no mistake. A lot of people don't understand running a 2-4 and have records in 2-4. and four, it, It's it's very hard because, yeah. you know, as you know, as coach, you know, you can't deplete it, your whole um, energy source you right, know, in right. the 400. You know, you have to save some for the 2 Mm -hmm. and, and and so you have to, it's like a balancing juggling act so it's, it was very so i didn't you know if it was just a four alone i think it would be lower or if it's just a two alone i think mm -hmm. it could be lower but it, it was one of those um management um <clears throat> protocol that we have to manage uh, my 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 energy system um mm -hmm. with the because of the the time frame between the two and the four all right um for, for for those records, especially in class three, persons believe that this thing will never be broken. Here comes another. They call him Kobe Christopher Taylor. Yes. When you heard that this youngster broke a record, what what really went to your mind? Well, you know, it's it's you know, records are made to be broken, man. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that it's a car bar guy that did it, you know, I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything yeah. kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all hands on on that. It's no problem. But you know, make no mistake. You know, um, CT Cubby, you know, was one of those, you know, exceptional kid that comes around every, every five years. You know, every, you know, so it's not like he didn't have talent. You know, the kid that mm -hmm. ranged from one to four, one to four, and it's very rare you have a kid that have that kind of range. The last mm -hmm. kid was um, Ali Watson. Yeah. I think it was the last kid that had that kind of range. So, you know, you have to give the kid props, man. I mean, the kid was, um, the kid was the, I mean, he's still a talented kid, uh, I should say. So I have no gripes about him breaking my record. Okay. Now, you had some, you basically had an unbeaten streak at Champs until that day when you were about to, to, to leave Champs. What was it like just to be blown away these athletes? Were you like, did you feel like you were invincible at the time? 
You know, honestly, it's, it's, it's it would, like I said, that's why I think I got the name Little Warrior, because like I said, I was just like, you know, someone said I run kind of mean, <laughs> I run angry, you know? Mean running, yeah. I yeah, know that yeah. term. Huh? I know that term. You're running mean. Yeah, the man run mean, brother. Yeah. You know? But, you know, honestly, I'm not lying to you, coach. When I hit the track, you know, before I hit the track, you know, you know, go to that huge tunnel, you know, feel like uh, I'm at the, the 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 Rome facility, you know, the, the Olympic Rome. Mm hmm once I hit that track, man, I'm telling you, I, I don't hear anything, you know? It's like, it's like what I'm doing out there, it, 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 I'm just tune out. I'm tuning in or tune out. They call it um, tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. so, so what what I was doing on the track, honestly, I don't know. I didn't realize it until after, after the race. Because okay. really and truly, I remember one time, you know, I told someone to stay right here and just, you know, and and just call me, you know, and, and I didn't hear the person, you know, at all. So it's really I have a ton of vision when I hit the track. Um, mm -hmm. After I hit the track, then people telling me what I did and coach, especially coach, you know, after, you know, because he, he, he do coach after I run, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Danny, you know what I mean? But it, it was something I, I realized after the fact. It was never in the race itself. I realized what I did was okay, um, okay. so exceptional yeah all right um many would say this was one of the the, the most outstanding races of of your your career at champs but let me before i get into that there was there was this um michael who said that the race that you beat thomas mason yes you, you want to tell us about that one you know honestly man i'm still if anyone have that tape or recording mm -hmm. I, I would pay for it because that to me that was one of the biggest race i ever run in my career mm -hmm. because going in as a class one i was a first year class one back then mm -hmm. but going in there was a trend right so um yeah kerry johnson i'm sure you know about kerry johnson campadown mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Campadown through zane and everybody from campadown big up yourself dr allen c cunningham um Teddy. So Kerry Johnson beat Howard Davis from Calabar, right? And then and then Thomas Mason beat Kerry Johnson from Campadown. Then here comes me, right? So it's every first year winner, every first year athletes beating up the, the seniors, right? So it was my it was my time on deck, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, brother, I was, I mean, you're talking about short. And these guys were, they were, they were tall guys, you know what I mean? Kerry Johnson, Thomas Mason were very tall guys. Roberts from Georges, he was a tall guy too. So I was the shortest guy by far in that race. But I'm telling you, man, when that race ran, I'm telling you, bro, it, it was, it, it was something. I run scared the whole time. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I was just gone, man. I, I, when I run that race, it was one of the most heart beating, heart trumping race ever. And the fact that I, I, I continued the trend and then I ended, make it special. So the next year, I think that um, your guy there from Jago, mm -hmm. um, um, what's his Powell? name? Powell? Norman. Um, young is, is um, for, Class three champion, class two champion from Jago before Paolo. It soon come to mind. But, but, but it killed, I'm sorry, Dane Edwards. Dane Edwards. Dane Edwards, yes, 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 Dane Edwards. Right, so Dane Edwards was the next kid, um, first year one. And um, and of course, he never he never um, had a chance, but, um, <laughs> but the fact that I, I continued that trend and ended, I think that was my, my my glory to me it was my glory time glory race but it was it was an excited race though mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No people if anybody out there knows where we can get a hold of that tape please get in touch with me so we can get it the the, the, the little warrior this this did pay for it that's yes. how much he, he, that, yes. that race meant okay, to him but yeah. there's a, there was another race where um 
Donovan Paul, one of the Pauls, brother. Yes. Handed you your first defeat ever at Champs. So I'm <laughs> about that one. <laughs> Man, you have to bring that one up, right? <laughs> oh, hold on. Why you think about it? <laughs> Why you think about it? Big up to all the persons in the comment section. I'm I'm gonna ask you to get your questions ready because I'm I'm certain that you have questions to ask the little warrior. Um shut on another color bar man, the utmost for the ice. Big up yourself for that super chat. And all like color bar people in the chat. You can just throw down some 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 lion head from the, 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 the comment section, no? <laughs> all right, all right, little warrior. Answer that question now. I know you don't want to hear that question. <laughs> I know, man. I know. I know. I know. We have bro. to ask you that one. What yeah, was going through your mind when that race happened? Man, I'm telling you, bro, that race right there was my first experience that that happened and you didn't know what to do. You know what I mean? Because in every race, me and Irma can league, we have a plan. You know, we either run the first two, you know, run the first three, you know, run the first 160 you know, run a first 180, you know. Mm -hmm. So so the plan for that race is is run the first 160, right? Come off, you know, and just hold on to their life, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it's also mental too, between me, you, and the fans. Mm -hmm. right? The way we ran races was, if I'm already in front of you, you should be deterred from trying to catch me. Mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Because if Daniel England is in front of you running, you're not going to try to catch him. You're going to try to secure your spot. You, there's no way you're going to catch him, right? Mm -hmm. So, but Donovan, man, that guy um, turned it up the last, I think, the last 60 meters. He joined me. And I'm telling you, bro, I totally panic. Uh, if I did, I totally panic because it never happened to before, you know? Right, right, right. Um, the, the, the time wasn't even that fast, to be honest with you, because in, in the semifinals, I think that race was 21-2. You know, it was a, it was a slow time mm -hmm. uh, because I run way faster in the semifinals. But I just really, honestly, I panicked, man. And normally I could change gears, if you understand yeah. what I'm saying. But I couldn't change in the gear because you're this guy. <laughs> he caught me. I panic, and then the race over. You know, it was just it happened so fast. I'm like, man, dude. I'm telling you, bro. You could hear a you could hear a pin drop at the stadium, man. It, yeah. It was, um, it was very. It was a shocking, shocking defeat, my man. Shocking defeat. So what did your coach say? Because you you said um previously that he coached after the the, the, the race. What did he say in this one? Well, I mean, honestly, he was like, hey, man, um, shake it off because we have the four by one, four by four. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, he asked me, you know, what happened? And I told him I, I just literally tied up, you know, mm -hmm, I, I couldn't, mm -hmm. my range of motion was was shrinking. I, I didn't have the the long, lanky um, stride coming in, you know, yeah. I pretty much kind of shrivel up per se, um, shrink in, in my um, my stride frequency. I should say, but um, but he was just like, do this, you know, um, let's get a shake out because you normally I get a shake out mm -hmm. after the race, um, get some refreshments, and um, you know, you know, the, the crowd, the, the the group, the troop, um, kind of rallied behind me. I mean, everybody was kind of stunned, really. Everybody was just quiet, you know, but no one. No one ever expected. So, so coaches kind of came around and said, "All right, guys, let's get a relay team together. You know, we have a championship to win." So, we just did that and just move on. You know, you still I won think. the championship that year, right? I'm sorry, repeat. I couldn't hear. You won the championship that year, nevertheless. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We we definitely um, came through on, on on top there. Yes. Yeah, man. You know, much people glad to see a boss. <laughs> a comment coming that um um from Karen Higgins. She said, "I always wondered what happened to England." So a lot of people, even you talk, no, you talk about track and field. You, you meet on the corner with some of your friends and you talk track and field. Your name has to come up. No doubt, no two ways about that. Right. So you're right. really a, a, a legend in the thing, you know. Um, what happened? 
when you when you left Calabar? Because I'm certain you did you get that opportunity to rep Jamaica at the Carifta Games and these Judah Games? Yeah, man, the Carifta Games. Remember, we had the World Games in '88. Uh, we had the World Games, World Junior Games. So it's, that was that was that was the first um, ever group put together by Jamaican uh, by the Jamaican Federation um, as a youth and um, Carifta Games. Yeah, we dominate Carf the Games, you know. Um, Carf the Games was easy. Mm -hmm. um, I remember came back at the Mutual Life Games. Yeah. And performed me and um, Raymond Stewart, Howard Davis, mm -hmm. and um, John. Um, we run a four by four by one. They put a mm -hmm. team together by invitation team. And we won, I think, around 30, 38 something mm -hmm. um, at the time. But I never actually get an opportunity to come back for the for the senior trials. Okay, okay. Um, that was that was the the really heartbreaking moment um, back then. But I did got a scholarship at Central Arizona College. Mm -hmm. That's where most there was some agreement made between the the high schools, Jamaicans, especially Irma McKinley. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of kids went to Central Arizona College, and then we branched off to either George Mason, Texas you know, Arizona, you know, um, kind of, kind of process is, it's, it's like a transition school, but it was definitely a college school. Um, right. We were running, the team was running around three in the 400. We were running as junior college we running around uh, three, three, four, three, five. So most kids that go to that school is most athletics, you know? So. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. But, but, after after that, it's it was what really happened back in the back in the in the nineties. It, it was kind of hard to get information out of Arizona to Jamaica mm -hmm. um, because it was so far. <laughs> I mean, I tell people I'm going to Arizona, like, dude, what, what's out there, you know? <laughs> but like, but like I say, it was a transition for most athletes uh, mm -hmm. from Jamaica. Um, after I think it was ninety two. You know, I couldn't fit the bill. I couldn't. I couldn't get on a plane for the trials. Mm -hmm. So that kind of break my heart at the time. And and after that, I just kind of, kind of, you know, I didn't take track and feel that like, too much serious after that. I was figure, oh, okay. um, let's try to get this um, paper, you know, and um, and that's kind of buckled down on my schoolwork a little bit more mm -hmm. versus track and feel. I kind of you know shift shifted um, because. Um, it's it's all for me. I, I I get great joy and pleasure running at the national stadium, you know. And yeah. even though I run at different stadiums, you know, the pen relays, the it's not the same running at the national stadium. Man, yeah, man it's a different euphoria at the stadium, man. Yeah, it, it's a nice stage. It's it's a nice stage, my man. But um, but after that, I just kind of I just kind of went off in the in the wind and um, it was very disappointing. No lie, um, you know, because you sit there and you see people. That you know you beat, you know making the making the, the Olympic team, mm -hmm. you know you, you know these guys were, you know you beat them before, you know and and they made the team and you couldn't make it because you couldn't afford a plane ticket, you know a plane ride, you know so it's it's um yeah I, it was kind of depressing at, at, at the point. Yeah, I, I can't imagine how you feel knowing the talent that you had and you know persons probably would have been thinking otherwise that. Um, you did too much work at Calabar and you weren't able to matriculate. But here you are telling us that it was not, that wasn't the story. And it, it's good to know that um, we, we, we have an understanding now on why you didn't, um, you know, go through to the senior ranks. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. No. Um, I want you to give us your take on on the state of the male sprinting in 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 Jamaica. I'm I'm certain that you have been following what is happening. Uh, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Well, the male sprinting, I mean, no question, it's it's in it's in trouble. You know, it's in dire need. I mean, big trouble, I should say. And it's not and that, and it's not a lack of talent. You know, I really believe that the group is very stagnant in the sense of everybody's pretty much running the same time. You know, um, it's no, you know, uh, unfortunately the, 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 the legend world boss kind of left us in a, 
in a, in a situation <laughs> by retiring too early. Mm-hmm. But but definitely, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's um, if it's mental or physical or 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 just you know just being being satisfied where they're at. You know, mm-hmm. I just don't mm-hmm. see anyone really, you know, um, trying to take the bull by the horn and say, "Listen, you know, I'm gonna step out of the use in both shadows yes. and do my thing." You know, you just don't see that in anyone. I think everyone just pretty much. Um, they're running the same time, you know, and, and, and to me, you know, like I said, I don't know, cause every, every athlete have their own stories. I don't know why, mm-hmm. um, one can take lead after, you know what I mean? Because it's always mm-hmm. something differently. Right, right. Definitely, we, definitely we, we are in trouble in that department. Yes, sir. No, no question on that one. So what about, um, two of your lines? Christopher Taylor and Oblique Civil, you, you, you believe that they they can t- take them the men's sprinting or the male sprinting out of the state that it is in? I mean, the, the plus, I mean, they, they did well. I mean, to me, I, I give them an A plus over the last Olympic performance, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, only time would tell, you know. I, I, I don't like to do uh, predictions on the road because... Right. Like I say, track and feel, you, you're good today, tomorrow. <laughs> Very ungrateful sport. <laughs> right. <say>. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if they follow that trend that they're on, which is, you know, getting, you know, the the, the daily dose that they needed, you know, if they, if they, I'm not sure if mental training is one of them, you know, nutrition is one of them, um, physio is one of them, you know, you know, all these things, like I, I tell people, you know, track and field is not just training and go home. You know, it's more to that than track and field. So, but it's all about resources, you know. Um, some of these guys up here, you know, they have mental training um, every two weeks, you know. Uh, how much Jamaicans, you know, go to a, sit down and have a mental training class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's a very critical part of the development, you know. Very exactly. Exactly, and 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 not only that, you know, they, they, these you know these kids, you know, like I say, it's not lack of talent. They they do have talent, but they're not. To me, is they're not developing the right way, you know, like other U.S. athletes are doing. Meaning, you know, we have the fastest kids in the world, right? You know, Champs is one of the biggest high school, but outside of that, we 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 are not competing outside. Once you left high school, we're not competing on the NCAA, you know, as hard as we as we should, you know. So to me, I I, I think they're not developing right in the sense of in a proper um, training program in a in a, a system that can build them body, build them them structure, you know, and they can take on the load, you know, because once you go pro, you know, it's it's a different load. Yeah, you know? it's more load, more load. Right, right. So. Um, yeah, man. So definitely something to, um, you know, food for thought, you know what I mean? But Definitely. So what about the females? You think that the females will continue to remain on, on, on top? Of course, man. I mean, female have been carrying us for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, um, Sir England, a lot of people think that it is a new phenomenon, you know. No, no. Yeah. If you think that's new, then welcome to track and field. <laughs> 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 but female has been carrying us for a long time, my man. A long, long time. You know, I mean, I don't think the female's going to fall off at all. I mean, look at the new crop that's coming up. You know, that new crop is, is just amazing, bro. I yeah. mean, like the whole new section there, the the, the sisters, the Kirona Davis, the, you know, um, one from Florida here. Yeah, Brianna. Brianna, yeah. you know, Brianna Williams, you know, Miss Williams. You know, that I whole heard, if I could say that, <laughs> you know, that's, that's that dude, I'm telling you, man, easily three to four years, easily. Yeah, we, definitely. We're going, we're going to dominate, easily dominate there. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, for, for the persons who are just coming in, um, welcome. Um, we would have said this already, but someone is asking the question, are you still, are you coaching and are you still involved in the sport? Yeah, definitely. Um, right now, I I do. I, I have a foundation, the Daniel England Foundation, 
And as you, I'm not sure if you heard, but I did the first athletic summit um, in Jamaica in 2019. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do. It's a it's a it's an educational program, you know. And and what I'm trying to do is help every athlete, every child in a transition that could help them for the next for the next level, right? Mm -hmm. So I do coaching, but I do not only you know, physical, I do mental coaching, you know, because I think that's one of the main reason. Um, once you go to the higher level, it, it, it makes you so much different as an athlete, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yes, I do coach and I do athletic cons um, consultation, you know. Um, I do, and like I said, I do a lot of um, anything athletics, man. You know, um, the, the goal is to, you know, be involved with, you know, Jamaican youth athletics program somewhere, some of some formers, some shape, you know what I mean? Because I really think um, there's more to track and feel that I think as a whole Jamaican um, can take advantage of, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think I provide that service if, if someone want to hire me, you know, I'm available. <laughs> You know, in the athletic department, mm -hmm. but definitely, um, I do coach high school at the time, um, mm -hmm. right now, and I do coach um, club track. So, um, after high school, then you take an hour break and you can hang out with the club track. Mm -hmm. I love club track kids because they 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 dedicated, you know. Um, okay. high school kids, you know, parents just want you out the house. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's not like Jamaica, you know, Jamaica, hey, you're doing it because, hey, man, you want to go out far and uh, you want to, you know, scholarship, you know. But the high school here, you know, it's it's mostly leisure. Mm -hmm, you, know? mm -hmm. you get the most serious athletes when you go to club, you know. So I, I stay involved, I stay in tune um, with the Dana England Foundation, and I, mm -hmm. I try to make it um, available for all kids. You know, I recently do a roadmap um summit other day with, with Calabar and most schools and um teach them the way give them provide the information for all the different coaches you know mm -hmm. how to you know submit your application uh, to NCAA how to you know go out and reach out to coaches you know if if you if you don't because the stigma I have a kid come to me one time and say hey man you know say sir you know I need your help you know I'm say what's going on you know say well you know I'm a senior, I, I, and I don't have a I don't have a scholarship, you know. I said, "What do you mean you don't have a scholarship?" You know, I mean, to me, every high school kid in Jamaica should have a scholarship because the mm -hmm. timing is so amazing, right? I mean, yeah. If you if you perform at champs, you should be getting a scholarship. You know? Exactly. So so I, I I created a roadmap, and the roadmap are pretty much if you follow the roadmap, you know, you're pretty much you can do it yourself. You know, I even provide um, six of my contact coaches. Um, out of my database that they can use, you know, um, pretty much, you know, do it themselves if, if, if no one's available. If the parent's not available, coach is not available, that's something they can do, create, their, you know, your, your athlete profile, you know what I mean, and reach out to these coaches. So those are the, those are the different um, platform I'm creating for the youths um, of today. And hopefully, you know, we can get them into – into a system that they can structurally grow, develop, you know, mentally, physically, you know, and then come back and represent us, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, once you come over here, you're Jamaican, you know, you're not Casey, you're not Calabar, you're not Woolmans, you're not Georges, you know what I mean? Yes. So, so I try to create a platform that when they come over here, it helped them with the transition a little bit easier because it was a shock for me, you know, I mean, Coming, coming over here, no one tell me about ramen noodles, you know? <laughs> you, have to have, you have to have a lot of those in stock. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, so the, the Daniel England Foundation is, is here for mostly um, youth athletics, and, and I'm just trying to get them a little bit, the transition a little bit easier for them. Mm -hmm. but yes, I'm, I'm totally involved in, in coaching. That's awesome. That's awesome. The work that you're doing, even through your foundation. Big ups to that man. Yes. Um, Neo Sovereign asking a question. What does, uh, well, what do you think about the current track clubs in Jamaica? 
and do you have a thoughts of you know coming back to involving a club in jamaica i mean i i if i want if, if i do come back i want to come back as, as a national you know youth athletics you know i am um, the clubs the deal with the clubs in in jamaica to me you know it's too much clubs but not enough facilities <laughs> you know what i'm saying if you if if you have a club you should be able to have a facility to sustain that athlete you can have a club and you have um 100 pound of weights in your weight room <laughs> you don't have a you don't have a, a physio you know you don't have a, you call it a rub down guy you know you don't have um your daily management management team you know um but it, it, it's too much because to me the facility is not there you know so something you have to give you know because you're not getting the the, the 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 full resources that that's that really definitely that you deserve you know what i mean um but there's nothing wrong with the clubs i just think if you have a club you know, do it right, you know, do it the right way, but you have all the resources that athlete needs to succeed. You know, you can't just say, hey, I'm gonna build a club and all you do is train and go home. Right. It, it, it doesn't work like that. You know? Take care of all of the uh, other facets that involves the sport. Yeah, yeah, you, you definitely, it's more, it's more to that. You know, you, you have to have a management team, you have to have a marketing team, you have to have, you know, um, a chaperone, you have to have, you know, a PR person, you know, that's a club, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But having, you know, having just a coach and a track, you know, weight room, um, very um, skeleton weight room, you know, that's, that's not a club for me, you know, that's, that's, that's disaster waiting for you, you know, as an athlete, you know. Okay. Uh, there's a question here coming from, Richard, all the way in England. Hey, big up England. <laughs> all right. Um, do you have any th any thoughts or concerns over the popularity of the Diamond League? Some say it's boring or too long. What are your thoughts? No, man. Diamond League is, is the best thing to happen to athletes, man. Because that's the only way they get paid. You know, people don't understand. The Diamond League, is there's a lot. But you have to manage. And that's why I said to you earlier, I mentioned earlier, you have to have a management team. You know, you have to manage your race. You cannot say you're gonna run every race, right? Because you don't quickly burn out, right? But the Diamond League is a league that pays. You know, World Games don't pay. You know, um, World Relays don't pay. You know, um, you know, all these international meet don't pay. You know, they give you medals. You know, Diamond Leagues is what. That's how the athletes get 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 their money. That's how they they. They feed their family and 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 and, and stuff. So I'm all for Diamond League, but you will have to have a management team that manage your race. You cannot run every race, you know. Um, and that's and that's the difference, you know. Um, even on the day when Shelly started, she didn't run every race, you know. She runs. She pick and choose her race. Elaine pick and choose her race, right. you know. That's all. You, that's all you know. You have a good management team. You know what I'm saying? So the Diamond League is there. It, it, it's it's there for the athletes that that need to get paid. Need they need money, you know. So why not? You know. All right, great. And we have a Li Elaine Livingston again from UK, England. She's saying that it's nice to see you, and she's not a color bar fan. But one thing she can't forget, um, you on that corner. <laughs> 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 yes, um, Elaine. Um, thanks. I appreciate you. I, I'm gonna consider you the lionette now. But definitely, like I mentioned earlier today, the the, the, mm -hmm. the turn was my it, it was my um, it was specialty. my specialty. You know, yeah. it's my sweet spot right there. You know, yeah. I just you know, I for some reason I just love running the turn because everybody just stuck on it. You know, but I just kind of just breeze through it, man. It was it's, it, I enjoy running the turn. Right, so um, Neo again is 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 lauding you for what you're doing, and um, he's basically asking if you would normally get like a referral fee, um, kind of like of an agent sort of thing, the work that you do, 
in terms of referring athletes to, to, to college or universities? I mean, unfortunately, I do not get a referral fee because normally if, if you're doing college, obviously there cannot be too much funds in it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, my joy, my joy and passion is, is, you know, I'm Jamaican first and I'm Calabar second, you know? So to me, if a Jamaican do good on the, on the, on the, on the stage, you know, I feel proud of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Calabar is, is my second passion, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, help. It's not just Calabar, but I'm trying to help any student athletes, you know, make that transition over, you know, that's my pride and joy. Where my money comes from, you know, is 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 you know corporate sponsors of the events. You know, if, if corporate sponsors would um, ride with me um, by putting on these different seminars and different events, you know, that we can um, help the kids and maximize their their, their 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 potential by you know providing all the information. You know, we did a the summit, you know, where we had you know we had Carol Beckford. You know your previous um, guests. You know people like themselves. You know uh, telling the kids how to manage their money, how, how to manage their time, how to be be sellable, how to sell your product, sell yourself. You know. Um, so those are the those are the different ways that I want to make it more. Um, feasible or make it more affordable to 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 the audience, you know. Yeah, man, and and that's pretty good. Uh, Everton Jackson is saying what you're doing uh, through your foundation is trying to do exactly what um, Jamaica is lacking: help to transition high school athletes in college and the pro ranks. Um, because um, I think most times they have an issue where that is concerned. But through your foundation, um, have you? Well, uh, I, I, I don't know if I should ask that, but once <laughs> the foundation, it's, 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 it has been blown up already, right? And everybody right. knows, or the people that should know about it, right. um, they, they, have, they, they, they have word of it, right? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all over the internet. It's you know, type it up, you know, um, Daniel England um, mm -hmm. Foundation. Yeah, I mean, it, it is there, but like I say, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's, a, it's an educational platform foundation, athletic consulting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you if you decided that, okay, you have a group of kids that you want me to come in and um, kind of educate them, you know, in, in, in the transition, that's something I already did, I already done. Um, Color Bar did implement the roadmap um, platform that we did um, into the curriculum. So... It definitely it's 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 all about information, man. You know the you know we lack of information overall. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, and I'm here to provide information. Yeah. You know where that leads to. You know it depends, but definitely I would like to be involved with mostly the national team. That would be that would be more helpful for me in in what I'm trying to do. But end of the day, the work continues. I'm still going to be involved locally. I'm still going to host these um, summits every year in Jamaica. And so, you know, I keep it going, you know. Yeah, man, absolutely. Guna Town FC is saying um, he has to pay homage to, to you. Um, he watched you from class two to last year, class one. Uh, your brother, Glendon, was in his class at Calabar. Yeah. And he's um, giving you a lot of big ups, you know. Yeah, big up the lion. Big up the lion from which part, from which part did you come from? Um, Guna Town, where, where are you exactly? Where is that? Guna Town FC, where are you? <laughs> Where are you located now? England, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he, he, I guess he soon answer that question. Um, Neil is saying again, Coach. Everybody talk about scholarships in my time, but very few get it. I was a record holder at champs and couldn't get one, but it was the best thing to happen to me as I really focused on school. So basically, what he's saying because um, of the lacking of um, foundations or um persons who are um experienced in the area uh, right. being able to, to to give students you know ideas on how to do these things right he would not have you know right gone on to to to, to um receive a scholarship but gotcha. i mean this man is a is an attorney now so i guess <laughs> whatever happened for he's an attorney now so i guess whatever never happened on that side 
he is he's booming um in in the corporate world so yeah. so so yeah elaborate on that a little bit yeah i mean I, and there's nothing wrong with that you know it, it like i say we we lack the information you know um sometimes the top tier athletes get the most information versus um, that are tier athletes. And that's why I'm doing these programs. You know, I want it to be available, accessible to everyone, regardless of your status. You know what I mean? Once you're a student athlete, like I said, that's why I created the, the roadmap um, 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 platform. You know what I mean? Because if, if, if you don't have or a coaching to come to you, you can't do it yourself. You know, I mentioned that earlier that, you know, I, I try to provide the tools and the information that, you know, someone like himself could I take the information and provide? Because I have, I, I know athletes that came to America that really didn't do track. But you know what? They, they hey, I went to Calabar, on Calabar track team. You know, I do shot put. You know, and they send they send their 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 applications to all these schools. And all you need is one school to get into the system. All you need is getting into the system. So people really um, take the bull by the horn and some don't, but definitely either way, you know, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not for everyone, but for those, cause yeah, people get scholarship and they fall by the wayside too, you know? So it's not a, because you get a scholarship, that means it's a better yeah, road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely a juggling act once you get the scholarship because at the end of the day, um, like I tried to explain with um, Coach Devin Clark, you know, Coach Fitzman um, in the in the summit mentioned, you know, we 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 want everybody to get a scholarship, right? You know, go out far and you know get the scholarship. But once you get there, what do you do? You know, no one no one teach the student athlete. Once you get on campus, what do you do? You know, no one taught us that. You know, everybody wants you know. Take a scholarship, but no one, once you get there on campus, there's a lot to do on campus. A lot. You know what I mean? So it's 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 not for everyone, but definitely with the proper guidance and information, the tools, you know, one can definitely succeed, you know. All right, definitely. And the Goon Town FC is saying that he's in Colorado. Okay, cold country. Uh, yeah, big, yeah. big sky. They call it the big sky country. Yeah, <laughs> All right, okay. there's a Shireen Small in, in, in the comment section. Um, she's saying, good interview. England, um, can you be a student athlete and don't do tracks and still get the scholarship? And the person is in Jamaica. Okay, so um, big up Miss Small. Um, Shireen Small. Um, um, you could definitely, there's academic scholarship also, but you could also provide, um, you could take the, the SAT exam, you know, based upon your scores. That That's another way of getting in. Um, because like I said, you don't have to be the, 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 best, the best athlete at your school. All you have to do is do some form of um, athletics, right? Because the, the, the talent pool in Jamaica versus America at that age group, it's a big difference, right? I mean, I, I know people came over here um, running 50 point, right, in the 400, right? But the school, that's the best race. You know, that's the best guy right there, you know? For us, 50 point don't get you a chance. <laughs> you, know? You, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but, you know, what I could say is, you know, apply, put all your information down, you know, sign up for the um, sign up for the clearing house. You know, take the SAT exam. You know, try do a, a high score. Try to get at least twelve hundred on the on the SAT score, and, and take it from there. You know, that's all I could say to uh, Miss Miss Small. All right, another comment um, from Born Yamaka. Get the diaspora involved, host the student at least between breaks from school. What, 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 what do you think about that one, that comment? Um, breaks from school from where? Here or in, in, in Jamaica? In Jamaica, I would think. Right. Because, you know, um, right now, because of the COVID, it's very hard to say. But there was a time frame that we had to get it done in the fall because once the season starts, you're not going to get anyone to your, to your summits. You know, that's the reality about things. You know, we... You know, we start training now, 
you push it back now. You guys having so many um, races, development races now that, <laughs> that it used to be JC the first meet. Now there's other meets in, in the fall, right? So it so if we're gonna have a summit, it would definitely be before before November. That's the only way it could get done. Anything after October, you cannot really host an a, a event like mine in Jamaica because there's meets every day after that, every weekend after that. So uh, does it have to be a, a, a face-to-face sort of summit or would you think about um, organize it to be like on Zoom or any of those um, virtual platforms? Yes, and that's what we did the last year because I've been ha- I've been having it um, for the last two years. Um, this year we had it on Zoom. We had around roughly um, uh, 80, 80, 90 um, student on Zoom um, this year. And that was the roadmap presentation. Um, the year before, um, we did um, the summit in in in, in um, downtown Kingston. So definitely the, the Zoom platform is the way to go now because of the COVID deal. But on the same token, because of the kids them schedule, it's very hard for coaches to get all the athletes at the same time due to their, their schedule, you know? So you have to make sure you do it before season and then you could um, go from there. Okay, cool. Um... Oh, the, the the person was saying that it was between uh, breaks in schools in the U.S. Kids can't stay on campus. Okay, so the so she so the person probably talking about um, college, um, right? College right. Deal. Mm-hmm. right. Um, I haven't reached the college level yet um, because to me that's a, that's a that's a good st- structure as it is. You know, um, once you reach college. Um, they have their own management team. They have their own facility. They have everything to your resources. You know what I mean? So I don't think they would need me to have that kind of um, – it wouldn't be beneficial for them, uh, per se, um, Coach Lindsay, because they already have those resources to themselves. The high school kids, they don't, you know? So um, so the college kids, they, they already set. They they they. they they got their gears. They have the money. They have the, you know, college kids just set. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, definitely. They're yeah. All right, Claudine H. Uh, welcome. She's saying that does anyone help the students trying to trying for these scholarship with the culture shock when they get here in the states and equip them how to um, survive? Uh, do you think you're well? Answer the question. Let me not preempt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's your show, you know. <laughs> no, man, I want you to. I was gonna say basically, yeah. if your your foundation do that, yes, right. So, and, and that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm here to help the transition a little bit, little bit, little bit more easier, right? By bringing on, I bring on coach. I bring on like a few coach, like Coach Alton McKenzie from Georgetown, Coach yeah. Clark. Um, David Clark from UTEP, mm-hmm. you know, um, um, to explain how on campus life is, you know, because like I said earlier, everybody wants to say, go get a scholarship. But once they get here, they don't know what to do. Right. And these are the things I prof- I, I, I provided um, in the summit. Right, you know, right. Once you get on campus, right, uh, you have to manage your time. You know, you, um, like Coach Clark said, you know, it's not something because no one tell you to go to bed. That means you don't have to go to bed, right? Um, you have to know how to manage your money, right? Because you don't have money now that you normally don't have, right? And right, next, right. it's a stipling. So if you spend it, you know, like <laughs> like me, you know, you you spend the money like water, and then you suffer the, until the next. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You suffer, and then the next thing you know, you have to wait. Like, dude, you know, I spent mm-hmm. all my money at Walmart. You know, what I do now? Well, you gotta wait till the next check come around. You know, and that, so, that, that that's like a long wait. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, bro. <laughs> that's when you're on the. That's when you're in the ramen spree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go to the cafeteria. You go to the cafeteria and try and steal some food in your bag. You know, and bring it back to the dorm. You know, but yeah. but definitely the the, the platform do do provide that information life on campus 
And, and so we do have those resources available um, if one needs that. So um, I do have a YouTube channel, Dan in England YouTube channel with all the different um, summits that I, I put on, the virtual. So um, your fans and my fans and your fans can definitely check it out. Yes, definitely. And see if they could um, definitely gain something from it. Yeah, man, I'll put it in the description of this video for persons to go on and, and check it out. Yes, sir. This, this is something very, very, very important, very good that you're offering to, to, to student athletes. And you see, persons like, like, like yourself who, who would have gotten so much out of the sport um, through our Herb McKinley, um, whoever was, was, you know, you'd have crossed many persons who would have assisted you on your journey. And for you to be given back, it, it is a very, 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 I can say very, 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 very good venture um, there for you. I know it's early days in terms of um, the World Championship coming up next year, but any predictions on the 100 for male, 100 for female? Uh, yeah. Any predictions? <laughs> like I said, I told you earlier, man, I don't do predictions because you know, as athletes, we know what can go wrong you know we know what what it takes you know what i mean we just have to keep watching watching the two watch you know watch the different meets see how they develop you know each time because you know as you know i mean even the trials you know people that win their trials don't win at the games certainly what, what, what you say about that yeah that's true that's true <laughs> true right what you say about that so you know as an athlete you're trying not to predict because you know you know that the, the, the track speak for itself. You know, you could say all you want to say you're in good shape, in good form. But end of the day, the track speaks for you, not you speak for the track. So it does it something we don't, I, I don't do it, you know. So I know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't do it. All right, there's another question. Was it true that um, Herb was hard on his athletes at Calabar? I mean, he it, it, it wasn't hard. Herb McClendon, he was a guy that he do a lot of speeches and he cries. I heard, I let me cut you. I heard when he stands before the boys, you know, yeah. <laughs> and they have probably the final day or the penultimate day or even before champs, and yeah. he stands and starts to pour out to them. It's, it's like it lifts the, 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 the whole mood of the boys. Talk to us about that, man, especially when yeah. he starts to cry. Right. So, so, so you as a, you as a young lad, you know, you see this guy, you know, just started. I mean, start off nice, you know. Hi, right, guys, you know. I mean, you know, this is this is what's coming up. This is what I have to do, and 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 man, and then Earl Michael start going into man. Listen, you know, you have an opportunity to be great. You have opportunity to make your family proud. You have an opportunity to make yourself proud. You have an opportunity to make me proud. And then you might start crying, man. I tell you, bro. We said anything that guy told us to do, I think we'd have done it, man. <laughs> Legally or not. <laughs> because I'm telling you, when that guy done with his speech, Coach Lindsay, I mean, you're so uplifting, it's so powerful. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think, you know, I wish they had more Earl McKinley in in the system, you know, because it, it was such a mental, mental um game changer. For everyone, I mean, even guy that came and run, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm coming out, you know, just stop busting out. They're like, dude, why are you out here, you know? <laughs> but it, it's you have to be there to experience Earl McKinley's speech. But I'm telling you, bro, when Earl McKinley speak, it gives you a new sense of empowerment, you know, that that I'm telling you right now, bro, if he tell you to jump a wall, you know, stand standing up. Uh, you would, you know, and 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 that comes with, you know, the, the the confident and the belief in this program. You know, I mean, I think, you know, people say it's hard, but you know, if you if you're into sports, you know, if it's easy, why out there? You know, you know, if if it's easy, why you out there doing it? You know, like I tell people, you know, walk a mile. And that's yeah. easy. You know? I mean, anybody could walk a mile, but run a mile in four minute. No, no, we having a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, because I know you're stressing your body, you're exactly. doing the work, you know what I mean? So, or pressure on the knee, right? 
You know what I mean? So if you're out there to try to easy on sports, anybody go out there and try to be easy on sports, man. You're not ready, you know? You're, you're buying time. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Uh, movements want to know, wanted to tell us about um, your rivalry with Carl McPherson and Edward Clark. I mean, there's no real rivalry there, man. Come on, man. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the record speaks for itself. I mean, exactly. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what to say on that one, but definitely big up Carl McPherson, though. Edward Clark, those are the guys back in the day. Those guys are really true warrior, man. Yeah. But, but definitely, um, we had fun at the character games because we were on the same team at the character games, you know. Um, so we definitely um, have laughter, but definitely um, much respect to them, though. Yeah, man. Um, Neil, again, Wilmers was a small team. But we always knew, even relative to Herb, that Stephen Francis was an elite coach. Did you have any experience with Francis? No, you know, I really don't have no experience with anyone outside of um, Coach Cox from my high school day. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody know, but every race I ran, Herb McKinley is at the end of the race. So the routine is I ran... I take my spikes off, I give it to him, and we walk back. That's it. So so there was no one even tried to even <laughs> infiltrate Daniel England at the mm -hmm. time. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, everybody just know that you just stay away from Daniel. You know, you, you just if you don't want to deal with Earl McKinley, you stay away from Daniel. Yeah. yeah. So I never really have the opportunity to have other coaches. I think I <clears throat> have conversation with Glenn Mills because we were training. I was training um, with the, at the stadium mm -hmm. in, in the weight room. I didn't know the stadium had a huge weight room, but we had a, we had a bodybuilder that was training me outside um, Calabar at the stadium. And, mm -hmm. and at the time, Earl Mike, um, Dan Mills was training Camperdown. So yeah. I had in some interaction with them during, during my um, training at the weight room. But um, with Glenn Mills, but that was the only really coach that I have a conversation with outside of Earl McKinley. All right. And again, let me put out the signal. If you have any way to get that tape between Daniel England and Thomas Mason. And Kerry Johnson. Kerry Johnson, yes. Please, yeah. please, please link up, link up. Yes. The man said you'll pay uh, any money for it right now. That, that's, that that's one of his. his, his his best race, uh, race out of his uh, catalog to date. Right. You know what I mean? Um, any any more questions from the audience? He spoke about Thomas Mason already, Michael Gordon. Um, spoke about Donovan Paul already. Um, Kerry Johnson as well. Yeah, man, he spoke about those. He came on late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that person came on late. <laughs> but I want you to just, you know, share any any uh, final thoughts with, with with the audience out there I mean, final thoughts is definitely I, i'm a i'm a i'm an advocate for student athletes you know i i really want them to to do well in transition you know that's my passion you know so you know in any capacity you know um anyone available to have the opportunity to you know to have me on their team you know i'm welcome to do so you know, however, you know, as as a parent, as an adult, you know, we, we, we should if you have a child, you know, pass that baton, you know, don't make them start the race on their own. You know, give them a position, give them give them the the opportunity, you know, for them to pick up, you know, where you left off, you know, to do better, you know. And that's all a child is asking for, a student is asking for. You know, give them the opportunity and the respect to do better and in, um, in, in their in their endeavors or in the future. You know, so you know, so help each one. You know, teach one. You know, take advantage to raise a child. You know, but definitely don't be don't be the person um, congratulating, but no support. You know, um, that's one, one that's one of the worst thing athletes. Hey, you know, you have mom and dad or just mom supporting me, right? But when I win, the congratulation is a thousand. And I have two person here 
you know, in my box in, in supporting, you know. So what's wrong with that picture? You know, I mean, support, you know, your school, your alumni, get involved. You know, I'm a part of the alumni chapter, Calabar, Florida chapter. I'm a part of Sons of Herb, um, Reformer Group, underserved um, Herb McKinley, you know. And all we do, we, 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 rate, we do fundraisers. We just have a recently fun golf tournament fundraiser over the weekend. And, and all that funds is going back to the high school, you know, to help them, you know, grow the science lab, the robotics lab, you know. So get involved with your alumni, you know, um, support, you know, every, every student as possible. You don't have to be an athlete to support a student because I, you know, I know it's rough, you know. Uh, most you know, athletes are single, single parent um, household. But but definitely be supportive, you know. Don't don't be the person congratulate after the fact because you know me as Natalie, that means nothing to me because he wasn't there when I was when I was struggling, you know. So support, support, you know, corporate Jamaican corporation, <laughs> please support the athletes, you know. Um they they are human too, you know. Come on, that that's well said, well said. And to top it off. Goon Town FC in Colorado said Daniel England was an elite and holds legendary status in schoolboy championship history. What a wonderful way to close off this uh, show tonight. It was a pleasure, as I said before, having you, Sir England. Um, you, 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 you reminded us of what you did at Champs and 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 Carif and all these things. Um, indeed, you were uh, uh, one of those super athletes. Um, things never worked out because, like you said, you wanted to make that trip to come to the trials, but you you weren't able to 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 to, to foot the, the the plane fare. And I want persons to find uh, um, persons to know that this was the reason, and not thinking that Daniel England was washed up. No, that wasn't the case. All right. So, thanks again, people. Until next time. Stay safe, pick up yourself, and peace out. Of course, when we leave this show, we normally leave you with a little style and flavor. Your style and your flavor make the city rock. They must say the season come out with a bang. Coach Minzy, best round here. Remember that. <laughs>